Welcome to 5 Minutes in the Word, a daily devotional in the Word of God. Today on 5 Minutes in the Word, I want to turn to a passage that is a favorite of so many people, but it's not a favorite because of a good reason. It's a favorite because they like to use this passage to misuse and abuse what the text is really saying. So today, turn with me over to Matthew chapter 7, starting there in verse 1, and I think as soon as I say that, so many of you are already going to understand why, what passage we're talking about and what's going on here uh, when this passage gets misused. Now here we see Matthew chapter 7 falls here within the Sermon of the Mount, and you come to Matthew chapter 7, starting there in verse 1, it says, Judge not that you be not judged. And that's one of the most misused ver- uh, verses uh, in Scripture, is that people like to walk around and say, well, stop judging me, stop judging me. Well, really and truly that they're not understanding the fullness of what we're talking about in judgment uh, throughout scripture uh, and not understanding who the real judge is because the real judge is God. And the thing we're judged against is against his word. And so, you know, there is a way to understand if someone is doing right or wrong, if I'm doing right or wrong, or if you're doing right or wrong. Uh, We're also encouraged numerous times within scripture, such as Galatians 6 and verse 1, to go out and help the brother that's in error uh, to come back. So obviously we can make a type of judgment and understand saying, hey, this person is living a life in sin. I want to help that person. So we bring them back into the fold or bring them to God and show them the way to be saved from their sins. And so when we read this passage, judge not that you be not judged, uh, we're not saying that no judgment can't be uh, delivered at all, but we do understand the ultimate judge is God and that we are judging ourselves against uh, the word of God. It says first in verse two, For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged, and with what measure you use, it will be measured back to you. So this is a caution uh, for all of us, that it's going to come back to you um, as you do, and you need to understand that uh, and be careful, because a lot of people walk around like hypocrites, and that's what we're going to get to here in verse 3 and following, is people act in a very hypocritical manner when trying to tell someone you know, their faults or their errors. Uh, They like to look at the other person and say, hey, look, here's all your faults, but they forget the their own. Uh, and that's not the way that we are to be going about life. Uh, yes, identify sin, help someone overcome sin, uh, but don't be a hypocrite in the way uh, that we discuss our uh, judgments. And so it, they're going down, down to verse three. It says, and why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own? So a speck and a plank is what's being compared here. And obviously a speck is far smaller than a plank. So here you're looking at the speck in your brother's eye in comparison to the plank that's in your own. And I think it's pretty obvious that the plank is the more serious problem. The, uh, they're both serious problems because we're connecting this with sin. But obviously you have this bulging plank coming out of your eye. You need to address it and you need to take care of it. You need to take care of your, your own house, you know, and make sure that you're living a righteous and uh, an pleasing life before God so that you're able and capable of helping a brother to, yes, to deal with that speck in, the, in their eye as well. Uh, both need to, uh, some serious, uh, you know, concern and care. It says in verse four, or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye and look, a plank is in your own. You know, that's something that we really need to address our own sins uh, as well as helping others uh, to be uh, righteous as well or to live righteous before God as well. And then it uses in verse five, the word, the key word in all of this, uh, in this judgment, it's hypocrites. And that is something that we need to be careful on a daily basis that we're not being. I have to be careful with that um, as a father towards my children, because how many times have we told children, well, don't do that. And yet we as parents do that, you know, I know there's certain things like, you know, having your dessert first. Uh, hey, we're parents. You know, sometimes we get to have our dessert first. Uh, but you know what? It's a good practice and a good principle to teach honesty and truth, to teach discipline to our kids in all uh, manners of life. And so don't be a hypocrite. Don't be a hypocrite in things that are dealing with salvation and and uh, and leading us to our things that lead towards sin. And don't be a hypocrite really in any part of life. It says, hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck uh, from your uh, brother's eye. You know, that is something that we need to make sure on a daily basis that we're trying to take care of. We're trying to take care of sin. Yes, sin in our life. And yes, help others uh, deal with sin uh, in their life as well. But I think the key today that I want us uh, to talk about is, is yes, don't try to claim judge not that you be not judge uh, means that, hey, stop judging me or stop saying that I'm sinning. No, 
sin is sin, and we need to call sin what it is. But at the same time, we don't need to be hypocrites. Uh, we need to live lives that's pleasing before God, removing that plank from our eye so we can help our brother deal with the speck in their eye. And so today, let's look to the Word of God. God is the ultimate judge, and let's live lives that's pleasing before Him.